Hello again. Let's look at this book by Roger Morrison, MD. Right here, check it out. It's called the Desk Desktop Guide to Keynote and Confirmatory Symptoms. I think this was published a couple years back, not even that long ago. By the way, if you, it's not cheap, it's like, I think like 60 to $100, I forget how much this book is. Um, I forget when it was published here. 1993, oh, it's not that new. Anyway, um, looking at the book, I think you have like, what, 50, 100... 150 almost 200 remedies here and it's cool because um, the way Roger Morrison kind of like nails down a remedy especially if it's like any book that's like keynote style um, as opposed to like the real kind of dense material medicas that you find um, that just have all these symptoms and all this information this kind of just gets to the point it gives you the real you know confirmed um, consistent picture of a remedy and keynote prescribing is a particular style but basically when a few strong keynotes match you have a pretty good shot of hitting a remedy um, on a case so the binding is really nice it's a really you know it's about an inch thick I guess a little bit over an inch probably um, the binding is really nice, the paper is really nice, but what's also really interesting about it, if you look at the inside of this, inside here, you kind of see how it's kind of spacious. I mean, if you were to look at, I don't know, let's find a homeopathic book that's, okay, here. For example, you look at uh, something by um, Vermeulen. Check it out, Vermeulen. This one. This one's not too cheap. I think I got the price on here somewhere. No, I don't. I think it's like 70 bucks or something. It's called the Con Concordant Materia Medica by Franz Vermeulen. Um, v E R M E U L E N. And what's interesting about this Materia Medica that I'm not going to get too deep into, it's basically like a condensed Materia Medica of by um, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten of the major authors slash materia medica, so, you know, like a condensation of the best, and anything that's repeated or kind of just doesn't make sense has been removed. So it's like a really nice book, and it's got like a lot of remedies, you know, like almost a thousand or something. It's a lot, but if you look at the density, it's very dense. You know, it just goes on like that. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I mean, there's another page. What's cool about this also is at the end you have um, you have um, uh, not the modalities but the relationship areas very well put together because you get a really nice idea of what remedies might be related to this remedy and what remedy to use maybe before or after um, this sort of thing. So this is pretty cool, and I'll get into this another time, but. Um, so let's just pick a remedy in here and just kind of look at one. Okay, apocinum. Like, I like looking at remedies that are, um, maybe not so well known and just, uh, talking about those remedies because, you know, it's like, like a remedy like Lycopodium or Nate Mirror, you know, we have a pretty deep understanding of these remedies. You know, so many people have written so much, so much information on those particular, you know, remedies. And there's so much research on it, and there's such a deep understanding that it's like the other remedies are just like so desperately needing um, an understanding. And it's like, like, like I like what I forget who says, this, but there's no such thing as a small remedy. Well, remedies are really the same, you know. Um, but that said, I have a really great friend that's a homeopath, and he's very good. He does classical style. Which is different than my style, but he um, he um, uh, he only uses probably about a hundred remedies, you know, and I keep hearing that over and over again. But you know, and that's probably 
you know, pretty accurate, and that's a whole different thing I'm not going to get into, but, uh, at least not right now, but let's, um, Look at apocynum. So, uh, for people that are not aware of apocynum, A P O C U Y N U M. Uh, apocynum cannabinum is the remedy, but it doesn't say it in this book, uh, the, the cannabinum part. So, apocynum is one of our most important remedies in renal failure and other conditions producing edema. The patient may present with full blown and a scar. Anasarca, anasarca, and marked ascites and pleural effusion. Some authors have dubbed apocynum as a chili apis. There is also a prominent action on the stomach producing nausea and vomiting. And so it goes on. I'm not going to read all the different things here, but I'm just going to read the generals of, of the remedy uh, picture. And there's four of them, and it's edema and an Anas Anas Anasarca, whatever that is, I gotta look that up. I don't know what that is. Fluids are retained, urine suppressed, perspiration suppressed or minimized, chilly and worse from cold. And then there's like these sub kind of rubrics on on um, the general kind of um, kind of system. So it's like gastro and, and you know intestinal. Um, there's urogenital chest. And the clinical area is interesting too, and there's a comparison area, but like um, ascites, diarrhea, this is the clinical, gastritis, pleural effusion, renal disease, nephritis, nephrotic syndrome. So this is pretty cool. You know, you get the sense of, um, let me see if this is the apocynum cannabinum. Just double check here. Yeah, it is. So, I mean, you get the sense that there's a really strong kidney and fluid metabolism issue. And there's a tremendous amount of coldness in the system. You know, it's dirty, chilly, and they're worse from cold. So, it's almost like, um, if you look at it from Chinese medical perspective, it's like a, like a damp spleen, kind of like kidney yang deficient, um, you know, kind of uh, cold terrain. You know, it's really interesting when you understand the, the Chinese perspective. Um, it's really kind of gives you insights into the remedies from a different perspective. <clears throat> anyway, so this book is really cool. I like it. It has like an accompanying, um, what's it called? Somewhere here. Oh, Desktop Companion to Physical Pathology. Again, from the same author, same kind of binding. It's Red Book. And uh, I might talk about it another time on that. But yeah, this is a really cool book. I highly recommend it. Um, there's lots of books you can get in homeopathy that I would probably not recommend so much. But this is a really cool one. And there's a few more like this. This would be, by the way, this, this goes into the therapeutics category of um, books. So like in homeopathic medicine, we have like um, like a couple different categories of books. So like we have the Materia Medicas. That, you know, is Latin for materials of medicine, right? And we have our repertory, which is kind of like a big phone book that helps us track down. Um, or, or, you know, it's another way of... It's like a real primitive search engine is really what it is. Uh, designed as a book to help us narrow in on symptoms and remedies and, and, and kind of figure out uh, what remedy to give using um, um, a book. Okay, instead of memorizing everything. And, and, or basically, if you have a lot of things memorized, it helps us um, get the stuff that we miss because, you know, it's very hard to remember, you know, six, seven hundred remedies. But that's not even what we have now. We have like probably like three to five thousand remedies in homeopathy right now. And if you could remember like two, three hundred, you're doing good, you know. Um, so, use repertories. And then this falls into the therapeutics. Um category now there's also one more category that you could say is basically philosophy there's one more category which would be provings but I don't really consider that another category I consider that in the material medica category it's like a sub category under material medica uh, so this would be in the therapeutics because like oh I'm sorry this isn't therapeutic this is material medica the other one he's got is under therapeutic so the point is um, and then of, of course, like, uh, 
you know, so this is under Materia Medica, and under Materia Medica, there's different styles of Materia Medica. This would be the keynote style, whereas there's just like straight provings. There's also, um, I don't know, how would I even say it? There's like more, like, well, they're the essence styles, right? This is kind of in that style, but not really. Um, this has some essences that it talks about, but there's like just a purely essence based, uh, like the works by. You know, Rajan Sankoran and um, Massimo Mangli. I, I, I can never say his name right. It's Mangialavori. Mang I, I hope I'm saying that right. Mangili Mang Mangialavori. If anyone knows how to say it, please send, you know, t tell me. Um, there's a couple of authors, uh, like Shalton, Jan Shalton's work. But um, anyway, so if you're going to have a couple therapeutic books, this would be definitely... Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, what, I keep saying therapeutic. I just, because I use the therapeutic book that he's got a lot. Uh, if there's a few, rem, you know, a few material medicals you're going to have, this is definitely one of the ones you should have. Um, there's a couple more. Probably. You know, I like, if I was going to narrow it down, I'll make another video about that, like where I narrow it down on into different categories. But that's... Another time. Well, thanks for your time. Have a great night.